Hello. Great. So I love print. And in 1996, there was not much more to, to study if it was designed uh, beyond, of course, you know, other, other uh, non-digital versions. At the same time, I was into jazz. I, I played saxophone since I was 16 years old. Uh, I went to design school. And I had a, I had a problem uh, at second year of school. I was really passionate about design, but at the same time, I really loved music. So at some point, I went up to my uh, uh, stepmom. Uh, and I asked her, she's very honest, she's always been very helpful, Diane. She's actually from the US. And I asked her, Diane, you know, I really love jazz and I really would love to be a musician, but, you know, and design is great. And she, you know, she, she's an architect, she understood both sides. She's from St. Louis, she understood jazz and design. And she looked at me, I talked for five, 10 minutes and blabbered around. And she's like, Matthias, you're a much better designer than saxophone player. <laughs> And I was like, okay, fair enough. Uh, so after that, I moved on and I just focused all of my energy in, uh, in being a designer. So in Barcelona, you know, it's a small city. Um, I had three jobs and they lasted a few months just because I was very, I was bored. I was bored, no one was really challenging. People were, you know, I'm organized, I'm proactive, I get things done. And that was sufficient for them, but I wasn't learning anything. So after a while, I felt a little bit like this. So I moved to New York City, and um, I lived in six different places uh, in a period of time. I had two jobs, and I worked with um, two people who have really taught me a lot about design, Simon Andres from Red Handler and Mike and Ian Kay, who leads um, Modern New York. They both instilled in me uh, uh, a love for typography, for process, and to in the understanding uh, brand in a much more flexible and open way, that really was crucial for me to do uh, what I, the job, the work I had to do um, on Behance. We're having some issues with the microphone. I don't know. Um, with Michael Lee and Kay, though, oh, I don't know. This is. Sure. Hello? Now? Yes? All right, let's see. Two. The third time's a charm. So Michael Ian Kay, I was 22 years old, so I worked 14 hours a day, six days a week for a year and a half. That sort of becomes three years in one and a half. But it was, it's, it's New York City. You know, if you don't do it, someone else will do it. So um, after that, I, I was literally burned out. That was when the day I actually learned the word, the meaning of the word stress. I'm from Barcelona after all, so I didn't know what that meant. And I went to the doctor and he said, you're fine, you just stress out of your mind. So I was like, screw this, I'm going back. Um, so I went back and yeah, that was very helpful. And uh, after a lot of food at rest, I was like, why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> I was confused. I was really confused. I think I just was stressed. I was tired. Um, and I decided to go back. I'm going to do this while he does that. It's more exciting. Uh, so I moved back to New York City. She can't do it. I said that. Good? All right. OK. So 2005, freelancing in your city for me sucked because uh, Facebook was in infancy, there was no Instagram, there was no Twitter, there was no way for us to get our work out there into the world in an efficient way. And also to, it was all worth the mouth, it was all like, let me introduce you to my friend, let me do this. And it was very slow and I wasn't able to really actually get much, uh, much work uh, as a freelancer. So I went back to work with Red, uh, with Red Handler, with Simon. And a month in, I got an email from Scott, my, my, my soon-to-be partner at Behance. We met at Starbucks. He showed up uh, with a suit um, because he was working at Goldman Sachs at the time. But the, I never worked with a dude in a suit. Like, I was like, I'm a designer. What is this? But uh, <laughs> from Barcelona, again, it's, it's important. It's important. And 
what happened is that, you know, and I'm going to talk about this later, Scott is a very, is a very intense, very focused, very intelligent person. And I think that uh, finding a partner, uh, I saw someone there that I could actually definitely share, you know, a long working experience with. Um, and the idea was blurry, you know, Behance was not what it was today, and we'll talk about that later on. Uh, it was a lot more complex, and, and the parts were too many parts to it, but uh, that meeting was great. After that, we worked for nine months, um, late nights and weekends, which was very intense, but um, that's what it takes, you know. This is one, <clears throat> this is a, a, a picture, sorry for the terrible typography issue over there. Uh, but this is at my mom's house in Barcelona. This was a month before we quit, both quit our jobs and started Behance for good. Sort of a, a proposal of kinds, if you will. Um, in September 1st, years a month after, we both quit our jobs and started Behance uh, at a small office in, uh, in Union Square. Um, and then to move a little faster, for six and a half years, we bootstrapped in, to, to us I can say these looking back, what we were doing is just building value. Yes, people came along and say, well, we'll give you money for this. We would like to acquire you for this much. We'll... But we saw that we were not done, that that was not what Behance had to be at the moment, in, in which we even considered an acquisition, which we never talked about, by the way. In six and a half years, we only talked about the product, about the team, about how to build something great and how to help the uh, creative community. Never sat down, I'm, I, I, I swear for my mother, we never sit down and say, Scott, what are we going to do when we get acquired? Never. My mother would be dead right now if that is true. <laughs> and she's not. Um, so to us, to th that's the mentality. Maybe it's because we started a company in 2005, a startup company in 2005, not in 2016, when you have a napkin doodle and you have a company. No, that's a napkin doodle. A company is something completely different. You have to endure the hardships of actually running a company, which we're going to talk about. Um, and in 2012, uh, actually, so six and a half years in, we, we get to talk to very smart, interesting guys from U, uh, Unisquare Ventures. They are the only, we talked probably 40, 40 different uh, angels, uh, venture capitalists, all sorts of different types of sizes and, and styles. And Unisquare Ventures really actually understood what we were doing. They actually got it. And that, to me, uh, it's quite important when you're thinking about uh, joining forces with anyone. It could be another company, it could be another partner, it could be, in this case, a capital. Because capital is not just money. Capital is means, it's resources, it's help, it's open doors. So it's important that uh, we took that long because also we built value and we built a behance that we were happy to uh, have people invest in. Uh, six months after, these guys cashed out, it was awesome. Six months after, we got the Adobe acquisition, which probably was also fueled by the fact that Union Square Venture, very renowned venture capitalist firm, invested in us. Uh, and then myself, uh, I left uh, last year, 15 months ago or so, um, to pursue other things. Uh, and people ask me, oh, you know, it's sad to leave your baby behind. It's like, no. Not at all, because I think babies are for that. You raise them, and then you let them go. You know, <laughs> you let them go into the, you make them a decent human being. That's what's important. You make them smart, you give them tools, you teach them things, you explain to them what the world around is like, and then, and then only, okay? And then only you let them into the world. You can't babysit your baby till they're 33 like every Spaniard, you know? <laughs> I love New York City, they get the joke. So, <laughs> the work, uh, I mean the work is blah blah blah, design, you can go look at it. I'm just gonna go through some of the stuff so you can see like the, the, the variation of work. We started Behance doing actual um, print pr uh, products to get the word out and to talk about productivity in the creative space. This was the digital version action method, sorry. <laughs> Chill, hold, hold on. All right, so Behance, you all know, well, maybe you all know Behance, not uh, mobile version of Behance, mobile version of Portfolio, the 99U, which is a, a think tank for how to, uh, you know, how to create very creative products to execute, uh, the 99 conference. Anyone has been to the 99 conference? All right. <laughs> a 
Of course you've been to. That's <laughs> one of the speakers. Yes. Uh, great. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Tom. Um, so uh, collaterals for the conference. Uh, more collaterals, but you know, obviously, this is my passion as well. So that sort of was my breathing room after, and I love digital as well. But this is where I was most excited, uh, and it was actually a few months of the year. Um, but I'm not going to show websites like that's not very sexy in in my you know, um, blame me, whatever. I, I love typography, physical products. We design awards, we design offices, we design books, we design uh, magazines. Uh, all to sort of talk about the mission of Behance within power in the creative world. And wow, I went quite fast through that. Okay. Uh, for me, it was absolutely amazing to be able to go through such uh, a wide array of, of design disciplines or, or elements of design. I'm not sure how to, I won't, after men, I won't uh, try to label things in such narrow spaces. So, I learned a lot. I learned a lot while I was doing it. I learned a lot after I left. I had a lot of time to think. Um, and through me and Scott and the team building Behance, um, I also learned why other people don't start companies. Uh, and it's because they have very powerful excuses for themselves. Um, it's never, you know, I'm with someone at a bar their beer in. It's like, dude, I just don't have time. We've been here for two hours, man. You have time. You just have to make time. You never have time. You make time. And if you don't make time, it's because you probably shouldn't be doing this idea that you think you don't have time for. Um, it's never really the right moment to do mostly anything. It's never the right moment to quit, to, to have a child, to move cities, to move countries. You have to just do it and see what happens. And normally, you can always go back, but most people don't. Um, ideas should never be polished. I think the first time that you get them out, because you might spend a lot of time tweaking details that you might completely discard afterwards. So spend a little time and push it forward. Competition will always be there. You should never be worried about it, because they're not going away, unless you murder them all, which I don't advise. Um, and it's quite hard. And a competition makes you better as well. I think if you have competition, then you have a bar. And just getting over that bar or you know, surpassing the bar is what actually uh, makes you better. And someone is already doing it's quite an interesting one because in 1997, Google launched, and there were 13, I believe, 13 before them that did this. So what's the trick here? The trick is execution. I'm not saying go out there and do another Instagram. That's sort of dumb. But, but maybe, maybe you have a, a different way to spin it. And it's, I think this uh, is really uh, an example of execution and, and focus and vision. So um, another thing I learned is that <laughs> starting a company. And these I learned actually um, afterwards while I was helping other companies, uh, you know, companies on, on wine uh, subscription, uh, motorcycle apparel, uh, content, like a bunch of things that I helped uh, build. It's very, it's, again, it's like having a child. You know, it's a lot more fun making a child than actually raising a child. <laughs> not that I know personally, but I know the first part, not the second one. <laughs> but it is true. Starting, starting a company, it's easy. You, know, you can get it out there, but then you need stamina, you need focus, and you need skills that don't actually come with the same skills that came in making the company. Uh, design is only helpful in certain levels, layers of this, of this trip, of this journey. Uh, so if you don't have the stamina, the focus, and if you don't think that you can spend 10 hours a day for the next 10 years, don't do it. It's just not worth it. You're going to waste your time, people's time, and money. And actually convince someone to not do something the other day by asking this just simple question. They didn't think that it was going to take 10 years. Because we live in this bubble where startups get bought by a billion dollars after a year. That's not real. That happens. But it's not your case. It wasn't my case. It's not most people's cases. So if you want to build a company, make something awesome, do it. 
but don't think it's going to take a little time. Every company was once a startup, but they took very, very long time, and the biggest ones are the biggest ones. It doesn't matter if it's big or not, actually. I think it's important that the best ones, you know, took a long time. Find a partner. Find your partner, like in life. Well, I'm not going to do the same one again. But, uh, well, no, more or less. Uh, I think it's, you know, we, we train, I see a lot of people, they come up to me and like, oh, my friend, my best friend, we, we like the same music, we went to the same school, we are both designer, tap, bam. No. Wrong. Incorrecto. <laughs> you know the word, you speak Spanish, it's great. <laughs> Wrong answer. Find someone who is sort of very different from you, as different as possible. I'm not saying, you know, some, and I know that there are examples of people who are the same that worked out and it's awesome, high five to you. Great. <laughs> but no, it's true. I, I'm not, like, this is not about, uh, uh, about uh, the exceptions, it's about sort of the rule. Um, Scott, it's from Boston. She studied business. I'm from Barcelona. I studied design. Like we actually, and one of, but one of the, the, the good things to have in similar uh, 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 is that you both are very curious about what the other one, and that you're very respectful about what the other one knows. Challenging is important, but also letting the other one do what they do best, and telling you and explaining to you, that is actual growth. And both personally, if we shut the company even before the acquisition, I would have been a much better designer and a much better entrepreneur, if so, before any of the good stuff happened. It was worth it just to have that relationship with Scott um, and to grow with him and uh, with the team. Definitely not. You don't have to be the best. People think that you have to be an expert. Oh, who are you? I'm an expert in this and that. It's like, it doesn't matter. Scott never run a company. I never really designed a website before we started Behance. So, I have one, well, I have many, but I have one little dirty secret. There's one subject in school that I did not pass, and I had to have someone design something for me, and I designed a magazine for him. Um, and that was, ta-da, web design. So I went to life, life is sort of like, you know, because I show you a lot of print, but behind is basically, you know, applications and, and online, an online network, a tool. Online, and that's what we did most of the time. Like probably 80% of the time we did, or I did, um, digital design. So uh, this guy, do you guys know who Bill Withers is? There's no sunshine when she's gone. I'm not gonna sing it, but he said it very beautifully, on your way to greatness, you're gonna have to pass through all right. And I think, if I think it's worth for everyone, like to just go and do it, and learn, and you know, <laughs> I don't know how you say it. I was going to say expression in Spanish, but it doesn't make any sense. Uh, just sort of, uh, you know, endure the pain of learning, but then it gets much better. And that's what, you know, growing is anyway. Um, you probably heard this one before, but I only understood it after I, I actually invested in companies. But this is not about investing. Actually, if you're thinking about joining a team or starting a team with someone or a company, think about who is going to be your leader, who is going to be your partner, who is going to be your team. Because in the end, it really could be the next Instagram, but if it's executed poorly, it's executed poorly by the people, not by the idea itself. So I think this is a simple statement that is more powerful than you might think. Um, if you go to interview other people, I would ask you to interview them. Because people waste their lives away. My friends, some of my friends, come to complain to me about their terrible bosses, their terrible partners, the terrible partners in the same like a team. Why are you there? Why, you don't have the highest, same high standards that they have when they hire you. In a way, you're working with them for them. Why don't you interview them? Have you ever heard a racer, whether it's motorcyclist or car, saying, ah, "The bike is fast enough. Stop." It's just too fast. It's fast. I don't want you to make it faster. Never. Why? Because they have this mentality. They can always be a little bit faster. And we're not talking three seconds faster. We're talking a quarter of a second faster. But a quarter of a second faster, I'm not going to do math. Eight times is two seconds faster. Well, that's a lot in a lap. 
and it could be a lot accumulated in a race. So people think, what can we do to grow, to grow our company 20%? Maybe do 40 things that move the needle half percent or 20 that move it one. That thing is more important than you would ever believe because people are always trying to find the silver bullet and it does not exist. Sure, you can tell me the story of your friend that did that, but fine. Again, this is not, it's one second at a time. And Perry from Kickstarter is my friend. We had, he's a, one of the co-founders of Kickstarter. And, you know, after Kickstarter was already what it is today, product is pretty small. It's actually a very simple product. What Kickstarter does is very simple, at least on the, on the front end for the, for the user. And I was like, I was joking with him, we had lunch. I was like, Perry, what the hell do you do every day? You know, like the product is already there, it works. Like I even thought it was great. You know, like I, I wouldn't think, what can you change? He looked at me and said, I'm trying to make the product smaller. And I was like, that's fucking interesting, man. Like, <laughs> it's like he had a small product or he made a small product with, with Perry and Yancey, and, uh, with uh, Charles and Yancey and they, they're trying to make it even smaller. I think that's brilliant. I think that's really uh, the Formula One mentality. If you don't understand this, you've been working in advertising far too long because you think this is normal. Basically, that is what it can be. That's what it becomes. And what is a committee? It's a bunch of people thinking they know the answer. And what I say here is that design, if you, if you have a design focused, of course, bring people to the table. But be careful how many people can talk about everything because it could be it could end up being in any of the stages of that. So at the same time, you can please everyone. So one on the designer side, on the strategic side, on the sort of phase of uh, concepting and creating whatever you're doing, and also the end. You can't design for everyone, for every exception. You have to focus, I think, on the majority. And we made this mistake. I made, I made this mistake early on, trying to accommodate absolutely everyone. Writers, musicians, visual artists, everything. And we built features, features that made the product co more complicated for everyone. So that's what, what the problem. So we narrow it down. We say, what can we do best? We can do best for visual artists. And so that's what we did. And yes, we sort of isolated and sort of removed the ease of use for the other uh, sort of two groups, um, but it made our product better for everyone. I have a quote. That explains it to me. It's important to know that one person can throw the entire chemistry off. And when the entire chemistry is not working, then you start, you know, the, the people are unhappy. When they're unhappy, they don't do good work. So I think it's important to always keep in mind that you as a leader, whether it's on your design team or it's you as, the, you know, the one overseeing everything, you have to keep an eye. You can't just be busy in your Excel sheets or busy in your interaction design. You have to actually talk to your team and feel. This is not about asking, are you, are, you, are you okay? And they will say, yes, they will say they're great. They are so happy. You have to keep an eye. This is more on the human level. You have to have the beat of your team and protect your team culture. Um, people ask me, how do you grow behind? It took an insane amount of time. Insane. It's slow. Don't think you will grow your product or your company overnight or in a year or in two years. For, I don't even know, they're so lame. I don't even know the, the statistics, but we have probably 30,000 people the fourth year. Most people quit. Also, we started in a moment where, if we started today, probably, probably would grow faster just because people want to share their work online. But before, the thing that we heard always was, oh, I don't want to put my work online because they're going to steal it. And at the time, I understood. I mean, I didn't, but I, I got where they were coming from. So, <clears throat> you know, we, I built 200 portfolios. I built, I asked my friends, hey, do you mind send me, or I'll, you know, it's just very grassroots. It, it takes time. The point of this is there's no silver bullet, and it takes time, and you have to be patient, and make sure that you, you plan your company, your growth, your process uh, 
to accommodate for slow growing. Um, and ultimately, it is not a race. Um, it's very long and it's very exhausting. So that's why I talk about stamina, I talk about resilience, I talk about being able to um, wake up every day and go do the same and have a positive attitude. And, you know, I love this picture because it reminds me of that. You know, it's been almost 10 years. And this is how you start a company. It's not that sexy. This is how you start a company. You don't get $10 million and get to put, you know, toboggans and, 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 and you know, uh, game rooms and shit like that. You know, you have three shitty laptops and flip-flops here. That's how you build. Look how happy we are. We're so silly. It's like, we're going to make it. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so, so, so I'm thinking, why did, I, why did I leave Behance? There was many reasons. You know, one is the baby reason. Like, there's a point in which you've done probably all you can do. All you can do to make this company great. Make a team great, you know. I left with a better team than I started. Like, they are completely, uh, not only self-sufficient, but proactive and incredibly brilliant at what they do. I'm talking about the design team, of course. The developer team is amazing, and the community team, and a strategy, everyone. But uh, there was other things I wanted to do in life. Uh, and I didn't quite know exactly what it was. Um, it's not that I left for another job. It's not that I left because I want to build another startup. Like, fuck that thing, you know? Like... <laughs> That's not what I, that's not like my mental, my, my, my idea of success is not cons constantly build new businesses because I, 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 I wanted, I built something with someone who I believed in and it, I built something that I believed in because it helped people. It did help people and it continues to do it today. And it also happens to be my peers, my, my friends, my, my creative friends and myself. So <clears throat> my life dream has always been, uh, I grew up in Barcelona, so we, I rode motorcycles since I was 14 years old. And my life dream has always done a very long trip with a motorcycle. So I also, my life dream was, how can you put a motorcycle picture in a presentation and actually make sense? So I'm, take, <laughs> I'm taking this, my baby, uh, motorcycle, this uh, 1984, uh, ADGS, all the way to Ushuaia in October. And it's going to be a long ass trip. And I'm worried about this. And I'm worried about this. Yeah. I'm worried about this. This is fine. That's cool. Uh, but that, woo, fun. But you, it'll be fine. It'll be fun. But, um, <laughs> We'll see if we can talk about this next year. Um, the, this is a challenge because it's extremely long. It's somewhere I've never been. My parents are from Argentina, actually. Um, this is the Golfo de San Matias, actually. This is where they have, my father has a little, a little house there. But um, I wanted to get, you know, I spent so many days in front of my computer for 10 years straight. I didn't see, I didn't see the world. I, I had two weeks of vacation. I, I, you know, I wanted just to relax. So uh, when I had time to think, I realized that I didn't, and I traveled, but I didn't know the world in the way that I wanted to. So I thought this was gonna be a way to reduce my entire life to just a motorcycle and two saddlebacks. And to, to me, it's a challenge. And I think, it, I hope it brings some, some different vision um, of it. And this relates to, to one last thing. Uh, there's this guy, Richard Saul Worman, who started TED. He's a writer, he, he's probably in his 80s. He is respected and known and knows every single creative and, uh, and designer worth you know, knowing. Uh, and I was at the National Design Awards a few years ago and he got the Life Achievement Award and he gave a beautiful speech and he ended say that this says, when I'm asked what do you want in life, I say I want interesting days. And that really, really made me think and it really made me really have put into words you know, something that, that I had in the back of my head. So I'm asking you, are you having interesting days? Thank you.